Good afternoon, church family. Welcome to the Moment of Faith. We're so excited to be able to take part in this, and we are so thankful that our pastors allowed us to take part in this, enjoyed uh, what has happened so far, and uh, so thankful that we have opportunity to be a part of this. And thank you, Brother Joe, for allowing us to be a part of that. Brother Tom does a wonderful job, rest of the staff as well, and uh, it is such a blessing to be a part. We want to encourage you, church family, to gather around our Bibles here as we go through this moment of faith and our time to, to get in the Word of God, to be able to learn something from the Word of God, to get encouragement from the Word of God. The times that we are living in right now, so difficult. Uh, it seems like that the battle is raging on so hard and it seems like attacks are getting stronger and stronger. But thank God that greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, we can overcome because Jesus Christ has already overcome. And I'm looking forward to the day that He returns and makes all things new. I want to encourage you today in the Word of God and out of Titus chapter number 2. If you will, turn in your Bibles, Titus chapter number 2. Verse number 11 is where I want to begin. The Bible says this, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Verse 12, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, Godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Boy, these Christian living instructions that God has given to us. He has given us a, an instruction book. And uh, I, I recall through my life, and uh, my family has had such an important part in my life, and my family has been such a blessing to me, but... My grandmother is one that was just a, a happy lady, a lady that was always a, a joking and having fun. And she loved little knickknacks, and they had little knickknacks around the house all the time. And some of my favorite ones were ones that uh, uh, were a set of monkeys that she had. And those monkeys were uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And of course, they had their coordinating hands over, the, uh, uh, over their eyes and over their mouth and over their ears. And boy, what wonderful instruction that is for us even during this time and in this age. Uh, boy, there's a lot of things that are going around. And if you are bombarded as, as everyone is right now with the social medias and with the media and, and with everything that is going on in the world, it just seems like we're attacked time and time and time again. But then, boy, if we could take that little bit of, of thought that those little uh, trinkets would teach us. to, Boy, if we look at no evil and we hear no evil and we speak no evil, there are things that we need to be looking forward to and looking for. It's not uh, what the media has to offer. It's not what the world has to offer. It's not what uh, fame has to offer or our, our, our careers have to offer but what we need to be looking for is Jesus Christ and the instructions that He has given to us in the Word of God. And boy, as we see this and these Christian living instructions is, is, is how I look at these. And when you look at it in Titus chapter number 2, uh, we look at some things that we have. I, I'll be honest with you, uh, the Bible gives uh, us the fact that Jesus Christ was tempted in all points. And, and there's different times. And, and a lot of people say, well, well we're living in different times. But... Sin has not changed, and we have not invented anything new under the sun. Simply, we have, uh, folks have become more or less ashamed of their sin. They have promoted their sin. They're being more open about their sin, but the sin has not changed. Uh, there was a time when people were more modest. There was a time when sin was more shameful or, and not praised, and, but Right now, we need to focus on what is the main thing, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and the Word that He has given to us. Um, and I don't like walking into things blindly. I like to be prepared. And God has given us the Word of God that we can be prepared for the, the life that God has for us and the instructions that He's given to us. In verse number 12 in Titus chapter number 2, the Bible says this, "...teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world." 
We need to deny ungodliness. We need to deny worldly lust. We need to look out for what Satan is setting before us. Satan's snares are very real. Boy, the difficulties of temptations, the difficulties of falling into the traps that Satan sets before us is a very, very serious thing. And we need to look out for that. Uh, We need to be aware. We need to be prepared. And the Word of God prepares us to be able to do that. In Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 11, the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Not just one piece of it, not just selected pieces of it, but to put on the whole armor that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That means that the wiles of the devil means that he is attacking us. He's setting traps before us. He is trying to uh, set things that evil that is out there. And Satan knows just how to set the trap for you and to make it luring and to make it look as as if it is just what you need. But uh, folks, I'm here to tell you that that Satan is, is, is setting those traps and we need to look out for what he has set before us. Well, those strong temptations that we've been set before us, uh, there's very strong temptations. Now me, I can, all, I can say, if anyone's ever been on a diet, you understand this, that desserts spells stressed backwards. Boy, when you look at those desserts and it's not what you need to eat right now, and boy, you look at those desserts and it feels like they're just calling you and you begin to get stressed out, Boy, sometimes those temptations that the devil sets before us and, and, and it looks luring, it looks alluring, it looks like it's just the great thing that we need, but then, but sin will take us and, and it'll trap us and it'll take us into places that we don't want to go and we don't need to go into. And Jesus Christ and God Almighty is trying to provide a way. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us that He sets a way of escape for us from those temptations and from those trials and those uh, uh, traps that Satan sets before us. I want to encourage you that we need to be looking for those traps. We need to look out for those traps. We need to look out for those those snares that are set before us. But we also need to be well aware of, well, where is our, our exit strategy? Where is the exit that we have? And be aware of that. But not only do we need to look out, but we need to also look right. Boy, the Bible also goes on and says live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Just because the world is in the condition that it is in doesn't mean that we can live any way we want to. We can't say, uh, as the world says, do unto them before they do unto us. No, do unto them as we would have them do unto us. We need to love them. We need to continue. We need to look right. We need to uh, look soberly, righteously, godly, even in this present world. where There are a lot of things that are going on in this world, liberalism and there's legalism, but but there is a liberty in Jesus Christ. We don't need legalism and we don't need liberalism anymore. Uh, What we need is the liberty in Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, and the liberty therewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Boy, we need to look out for what the devil set before us. We need to look right for what Jesus Christ would have us to go. But my favorite is in found in verse number 13. Look with me. We need to be looking up. Look, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, We are not as those that have no hope. Thank God that we have a hope through Jesus Christ. We have a hope because Jesus Christ died on a cross. We have a hope because Jesus Christ rose again on the third day. But thank God we have a hope because Jesus Christ is coming again. I'm so thankful that we have that hope. Uh, we, we, we need to be looking as, as if this is the day that Jesus Christ could come again. And I believe that we could be done with all of this before we could be in heaven before all of this broadcast is even completed. But thank God that He is on His way. It's going to be a great homecoming. Boy, a wonderful homecoming that I'm looking forward to. There's so many of my loved ones that have already gone on before us. There's many loved ones that have already made their home there in heaven. But I'm looking forward to the day that I get to see not only my loved ones, but my Savior, Jesus Christ. 
the one that died for me, the one that took the straps for me, the one that took the nails in his hands, the ones that, uh, the one that, that gave up the ghost. But thank God the one that came out of the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Church, we need to be looking up. We need to be looking out. We need to be looking right. We need to be looking for Jesus Christ. What are you looking forward today? What are you looking for in today's moment? Boy, I hope this has been an encouragement to you to know that Jesus Christ is on His way. And look out for those snares that Satan is setting before us. And look right for what Jesus Christ has prepared for us. Are you looking for Jesus? You continue to watch this moment of faith and God will continue to bless you, I'm sure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Look forward to the next time that we're able to join you today in a moment of faith.